And we're back! Welcome to Tiki Tuesday! Hope you guys are having a good time. Let me know how the uh, volume is on the music out there for you tonight. Can't tell if it's too loud or quiet, but I know you'll let me know, so it's okay. Welcome to Tiki Tuesday! We had to take a week off last week due to some crazy deadlines, but I'm back now. Ready to have some fun. Another Halloween-inspired Tiki. Uh, this one is going to be uh, based on the Gargoyle Tiki from Disney's Trader Sam. So it should be a lot of fun. We get to mix some of our favorite things together. Um, good to see you guys out there, everyone who's watching on the stream. Uh, we are live on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Twitch. Uh, the chat is on Twitch only. I can only see your chat if you're on Twitch. So if you want to uh, join the chat tonight, Head on over to Twitch, search for Octopolis, or search for TE Tuesday, and you'll find us there, and you can hang out and have a good time. But yeah, let's dive into this. But I want to hear what you guys are, uh, what kind of tiki cocktails or uh, other beverages you're enjoying tonight. I've been promising for a while to, uh, to do a craft cocktail instead of a tiki, so I'm doing that tonight. I'll tell you guys all about it here in just a little bit. Definitely good to see everybody. I'm gonna load up some black paint here to start me. I'll make sure that's on the camera for you there. And everybody always likes to see that part. And uh, we'll just start doing some of the outline inking on this. Maybe I'll remember to use different size brushes tonight. It's always a surprise. We'll see how it goes. But uh, good to see everybody out there. Cheers, cheers to all of you. Happy Tiki Tuesday. Oh, that's good. Very good. All right. So, yeah, this is going to be like our Tiki Gargoyle inspired by the uh, the one at Trader Sam's and Disney. So, should be should be a good time. Should be a lot of fun. Try to stay in the frame here. This is like my third stream of the day, so I'm, uh, I will try to keep the energy level up, but I know you guys will hang out with me. We'll have a good time. So he's holding some like dripping candles here. So let's just start just a little rough in with the brush, with the solid black, and then I'll come back and add some shading and stuff. Randy Cake says, hey, 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 there she is. Long time no see, Randy Cakes. How are things going in beautiful tropical Florida? I hope it's really good. Let us let me know what you guys are doing tonight. Are you having a tiki cocktail or something else? I've I've been threatening to do a craft cocktail and I did one tonight. I'll wait till a few more of the regulars join us and then we can we can talk about that. But very good to see you. Let me know what you guys are up to. You know how things are going on. Clark and Dagger. I've been seeing more, more and more. I don't know if you guys run Etsy ads, but I've definitely been seeing more and more. You know, your site popping up, your Etsy store popping up more and more. So it's either getting good word of mouth or ads or both. Hopefully things are going well for you. I I had a surprising amount of Octopolis and Etsy sales over the weekend. So maybe that means people are getting ramped up for the holiday season early, which you should. Whether you're buy from Octopolis or Clark and Dagger, there are shortages all over the place, people. So shipping times are already starting to slow down, all kinds of crazy stuff. So go to octopolis.com, go to Clark and Dagger, Start your holiday shopping early to make sure that you don't miss out because you don't want to let those people down that are looking forward to some awesome gifts from you or that thing you really want to get them. You're like, oh, I'll get it next month. No, you probably won't. So it'll probably be gone. So go out and grab it. Randy says, life has been insane. We've been so busy. Have wine tonight. Chow made steaks. Oh my gosh, guys. I would be right over if I could. That sounds fantastic. I mean, I would invite myself. I would be uncouth and do that, but um, that sounds amazing. What kind of steaks do you guys like? 
like what cut of meat are you guys into? Do you have a favorite that's like your go-to? I'll tell you guys my steak story in a bit. Uh, Randy says, we were super busy at the beginning of the month with Mass for Costumes, now focusing on holiday stuff that releases on 11-11. That's right. Oh, are you, are you going to do 11-1 or are you going to do 11-11? Which one of those is called Singles Day? I thought that was 11-11. Either way, good for you guys. I, for a variety of reasons, do not have my new holiday product ready just yet, but I'm hoping to have it out in early November or so. But uh, Randy says it is November 1st. Wait, is Singles Day November 1st? Or are you guys just doing your thing on November 1st? I'm not going to talk until you answer me. <laughs> that way, we won't cross the streams and get confused. Enjoy the silence. Okay, she says, I think Singles Day is 11-11, but we release on the 1st. Yeah, um, I always do all my like Patreon releases on the 1st, too. And sometimes my collector's club, so I get that. Hmm. Maybe I'll do Patreon on the first, and maybe I'll do collector's club on 11.11. We'll see. That would give me an excuse since I'm running late. Not by, I'm not by any fault of my own. Just, man, DC Comics has been so crazy busy. That's why I missed last Tiki Tuesday. Um, pretty much been working around the clock. Just trying to help out with crazy projects and crazy deadlines and just everything's crazy but that's good it's nice to be busy I mean I think that's the busiest I've been certainly since the pandemic started so it's good um, Chow Time says personally if I can I will grill tomahawk steaks every time tonight was filet mignon oh nice um, so I Christy likes fillets. I'm pretty much a New York strip fan. I do like a good ribeye. Um, it seems like there's a lot of variety on ribeye from like good to really bad. So it seems like they're not as reliable or something, but uh, man, Tomahawk, that's the way to go. Like that's, it's like the king of steaks right there. You guys are living, it's living well. But now, for those people who are not from the Midwest, um, a New York strip with the bone in is, is a Kansas City strip. And I spent the weekend in Kansas City visiting uh, friends. And um, they were very kind and took me and another friend to a really, really, really good steakhouse in Kansas City where I ordered uh, their Kansas City Strip, which of course has the bone in, and it was fantastic. It, clearly one of the, I mean, it's got to be one of the top five steaks I've had in my life. So it was really good. Um, obviously, you know, the cut of meat counts for a lot, but the people doing the preparation count for a lot too. Uh, so it was fantastic. Thanks to my friends for showing me such a great time. And I'll tell you what, guys, they had a great craft cocktail bar inside the steakhouse, too. So, Kansas City has changed a lot since I left. It's um, it's very, like, the downtown area is very, like, trendy and metropolitan. And there's, like, all kinds of cool hip bars and restaurants and stuff. It's, um, it's really transformed. So, if you are the type of person that think of Kansas City as a... Uh, it's like a cow town. It is definitely not that anymore. Uh, I was really impressed, really impressed. Um, Chat Time says, get yourself a porterhouse. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, oh, Chow says he got his from Sam's Club. Is that what you, like where you got your steak from? Well, I think that's good. I always feel like um, 
uh, what, Sam's Club and um, Costco, aren't they supposed to have some of the best meat like you can buy? I think both of those places are. So I think that worked out really well. Um, but yeah, it was a good trip to Kansas City. So, um, gosh, where to start? Uh, we could listen to Arthur Lyman talk about his big band days. That's really fun. Or we can skip to the next one. There we go. Um, so a friend of mine has a Tesla Model 3 Performance. Let me just tell you guys, like whatever you think about electric cars, that thing is amazing. Um, the speed, the acceleration. I mean, it's just, it's like a supercar that, that's a four door sedan, you know? Um, so it was really interesting getting to, to ride in it, getting to drive in it, getting to use the supercharger network. Um, and I really thought that, you know, it was going to be like all just panic about, oh, making it to the next supercharger and stuff. But it wasn't like that at all. It was, you know, it it was all very actually relaxing. Like, the, you know, the quiet comfort of the car. The ease at which it, you know, can deal with traffic. Like you get into a traffic jam and you just like put it in autopilot and it stops and starts and steers and everything. So it was a, it was a pretty nice, pretty nice comfortable way to do it uh, so thanks to my friends for you know letting me enjoy some time in a Tesla and thanks to my other friends for taking me out to that fantastic steakhouse in Kansas City so it was a whirlwind weekend but uh, it was a good a good time and I got to reset myself so I could come back I'm dealing with some Star Wars stuff I'm dealing with some DC projects, getting ready for the opening of the um, uh, of the Smithsonian project. So, just all kinds of stuff in the works right now, and it's kind of all coming to a head in November. So, just trying to stay focused, keep it all keep it all moving forward. You know. Uh, Child time says most of our meats come from Sands Club. Costco is king. They have a four wagyu. Oh man, you know what? I I'm. I've had it at some nice restaurants, but um, it's I would be I would, because of the expense I'd be afraid to prepare it. I'd be like, oh, I'll just ruin it. I'll just destroy it. But yeah, I've been pretty impressed with the Costco. Like we don't go there as much as we should, but like you could get whatever it is a five pack or a six pack of New York strips there for probably about the cost of one really good New York strip at like a like a fancy grocery store. Like I don't know where they are other places in Arizona they're called AJ's. It's like, you know, you go to a normal grocery store and you could spend like ten dollars for a New York strip, you know. But if you go to AJ's you could probably spend like thirty or forty dollars for a New York strip. And that's, you know, before you cook it, right? But I feel like if you go to Costco, you're getting closer to that AJ's experience for like, you know, the Kroger fries Safeway price. So it seems pretty nice. Chow says Tesla needs to drive me. Have you had any time, any seat time in a, in a Tesla Chow? This is, I had been a passenger one, but this is my first experience being behind the wheel. And I have to say, I get it. Um, you know, Chrissy has an electric car, ID4, but it's, it's definitely not the same. And, um, you know, the car only tried to drive me into a construction barrier once and like a, Oh, like a construction barrel once. So clearly it doesn't do good with construction zones, right? Um, but the rest of the time it, it was very pleasant and very capable. Uh, and you can see the refinement of all the years that these cars have been available in their software. And you know, what feels very foreign the first time you drive it by the second or third time starts to feel pretty natural. So. Yeah, it was it was a nice experience. I was pleasantly surprised, and I certainly understand people's passion because it, it does live up to the hype. And 
uh, any like concerns I had about the supercharging network or range or anything like that it was not an issue at all. It was never an issue. Uh, oh, let me let me only allow your comment here since Quinch Press isn't here. Um, Tell Time says, Tesla has a bad name in our house associated with tech douches. I want a DeLorean. Well, first of all, I'm with you on the door and I would much rather have a DeLorean, of course, because I I typically only purchase like two-door vehicles, um, for myself at least. So yeah, DeLorean would be the way to go. And I appreciate everyone who's been buying my DeLorean art. I don't know if you're trying to get me to say that or not, but I do appreciate it, especially because it was, uh, this is the day, right? This is the day in history, October 26th, when Arnie McFly escaped the Libyan terrorists to go back to 1955. So it's appropriate to bring that up. Um, and you know, Tesla, like Elon, isn't my favorite person. He's he's very controversial. But as far as like the product, aside from the person, it was impressive to drive. So it is what it is. Chow time, redeemed hydrate. Cheers to you, Chow. Oh yeah. So let's talk about this Craft cocktail tonight, guys. So tonight I made a Kentucky Connection, and that's going to be, uh, it's a real easy recipe, right? So it's, uh, you're gonna do one part Amaro to two parts Grand Marnier or Contreau, whichever you prefer, to four parts bourbon, right? So now if you only wanna do a shot of bourbon, you gotta do fractions on everything else, right? But it's easy, it's, it's one, two, four. So you're just doubling it every time. Now the, the trick is the Amaro. So the Amaro replaces like the, the bitters flavor, but you do wanna find an Amaro that has like a little bit of orange component, like a citrus. Uh, if you go too floral with the Amaro, it's not gonna be the same drink and there's a lot of variety of Amaros out there. So uh, fantastic craft cocktail, really easy to make. Now it should have an orange peel in it, I don't have one tonight. Um, and if you'll notice, I've got like little crushed ice. There it is. Um, you can use a big square cube or a big round cube, but traditionally this drink is, uh, you know, crushed ice or beaten ice. So either way works. Um, it's actually a drink where it's okay if the ice melts into it a little bit, that's fine. Um, really good like relaxation cocktail, end of a long day kind of thing. Just kind of unwind. If you like an old fashioned, this is definitely in that flavor profile. Um, but it's a little, I'd say a little bit more sophisticated and a little less sweet, uh, you know, depending on, on what you like. So if you like a little bit of that orange or citrus flavor with your bourbon, then you're, you're going to like this and if you are either burned out on old fashions or just can't find your favorite version of an old fashioned, um, this might replace it or at least augment it for you because it's that same kind of flavor profile, but again, it's a little bit more delicate, a little more sophisticated, uh, definitely less sweet. So it's just a nice alternative. It's kind of, I would call it the connoisseur's choice, right? You know, if, uh, if your bartender knows what a Kentucky Connection or a Kentucky Grand is, they're probably worth keeping, right? So they're in the know. Um, Chatham says, we drank $5 Shiraz, or Shiraz, I like Shiraz, $5 Shiraz. I'm not sure about that. Was it, uh, would you get a American, Italian, Australian? I like Shiraz, I think Shiraz, Shiraz can go very nice with um, with red meat, for sure. Uh, Randy's like, now chow time has to go to the liquor store again, lol. Uh, chow says, I had an old fashioned with chocolate bitters, that was great. Oh man, yeah, that does sound good. I was trying to think, oh, I had in Kansas City, uh, a friend's wife, she made a Hold on, don't come to me in a second. Cardamom old fashioned. She made her own cardamom symbol syrup. And um, 
you can also get cardamom bitters. It was really good. You know, the weather wasn't cold yet, but it was, you know, for those of us that live in the desert, it was definitely cool enough for a jacket. And so it was like a nice cool evening and we're around the fire outside and she made these cardamom old fashions and it's all kind of like snuggly and good. So uh, definitely worth, worth seeking out either a cardamom bitters or making your own cardamom simple syrup or maybe someone else makes it, I don't know. But uh, it was really nice. Highly recommend something like that. It's very good. Uh, Child Time says, no clue, it was on clearance at ABC, and it went well to stake on Amazon now. Interesting. ABC, is ABC like your local liquor store or grocery store where you are? I know what Publix is. Not sure about ABC. So down at the bottom of this gargoyle, he's like standing on this like little wooden structure type thing and then there's like three skulls but two of them are like upside down so this is based on the trader sam's uh gargoyle at disney so not my original design just having fun with our halloween theme i think the last two halloween ones have been original designs but just want to get in and have a little fun i'm such a big disney fan i gotta tell you guys i saw one of my friend uh yeah, Chow says ABC is one of their liquor stores. Okay, awesome. I was hoping that was the case. Yeah, one of my friends at uh, uh, Disney World, well, she works at Disney Springs, well, for now, um, she just got her ex uh, accepted to the Galactic Cruiser. So uh, she's a pastry chef extraordinaire. And uh, for those people who board the Galactic Cruiser, she's going to be one of the I haven't. I didn't read the details if it's just a pastry chef or if she's the head pastry chef or what. But really, really gifted baker. So um, what I say is, if you're visiting, you know, get over to Amaretts now in Disney Springs and get her good stuff while you can because she is going to be moving on to the Galactic Star Cruiser. Which you know, what a dream job for a Star Wars fan, right? And she's done lots of Star Wars baking, of course, at Disney Springs, too. But yeah, maybe we should cheers her. Cheers to getting your new gig at the Galactic Star Cruiser. Chow Time put up a link for Scrappy's Bitters, the classic gift set. Includes lavender, cardamom, black lemon, and Orleans. Orleans, huh? Does that mean just mean like Cajun or spicy or something? Uh, all organic ingredients, finest herbs and zest. Excellent. Definitely. Randy says, I love Amaretz and congrats to her. Yeah, she's a really great pastry chef. And the first time that I ever went to Epcot as a guest, um, she brought me treats and it was just so nice. And she, I, every time I went back, she was always there. And um, what a super talented individual. And I'm so excited for her to get this opportunity. I mean, can you imagine, you know, you've had your, your whole career with Disney and then suddenly they own Star Wars and then the next thing you know, you know, you have an opportunity to be involved with that in some way. So it's just really cool, you know. Can you start to see the, the gargoyle face coming to life here? I'm not gonna complain that Quinch Press and Let's Do This and other people aren't here because I know I missed last week, so that's on me, that's my bad. I can't help it, guys. DC Comics, it's been so freaking crazy working on this big Wonder Woman project. And then there's been lots of like rush and emergency projects. It's been really crazy. But you know, not complaining. It's nice to be busy. I've got one of my Star Wars Celebration concepts pretty much done. 
So if I can get my head back above water, I'm going to start on the second one. I mean, they're all things I've put in my sketchbook in the past, so it's not like I'm totally stressed about coming up with the ideas. I've got the ideas. It's just finding times to like execute on them, you know. That's always the hard part. Chow says, better busy than bored. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Chow Time asks, which Smithsonian is your art displayed at? So the good news is today's the 26th. The first press releases are going to go out on the 28th. And I believe that um, one of the online magazine type situations is actually going to have some sneak peeks of my artwork starting on the 28th. Um, the opening of the event at the Smithsonian is on November 20th. And it will be at the Arts and Industries building, um, which has been closed for, I, I think they said over 50 years. And this is the, the grand reopening of it. And it's all to celebrate the 175th anniversary of Smithsonian. So there's two big live events that are happening, one on the opening and one in December. Um, they really want to be there for the one in December, so I chose to not be at the opening in November because it would be really difficult for me to go to DC and do all that and come back and turn around and go back to DC like less than 30 days later. So um, I won't be attending the opening but I will be there in person in December um, for like a, they're going to do like a science conference and it'll be me and every, a lot of the other people that were involved in the project. So it'll be really cool. <laughs> Chow says in DC, right? Yeah, it's right on uh, the National Mall. So it should be really cool. And um, I'll have eight illustrations in the larger exhibit. And it's not a, clearly not all about me. I can't fill an entire exhibit. Um, but uh, again, there'll be some sneak peeks and stuff coming out. You know, I can't say for sure, but I'm under the impression there might even be some like merch that comes out eventually with the artwork on it. So, I mean, you know, they, they have plans. They definitely have plans. And so it'll open in November and run, I believe, until July of next year. Um, and that's when it'll, it will it will close and they will, they will probably be launching some other thing. Um, Quinch Press says, Aloha, good to see you, Quinch. You just missed all our hot craft cocktail talk. What have you been up to, Quinch? Good to see you. Hopefully things are going well. Let us know what beverage you're consuming tonight, what live music you've been seeing, what bars you've been going to. When I was in Kansas City, I think I got five or 10 people subscribed to your Instagram. So. Every time I brought it up, people are like, wait, what's, what's that Instagram? Where can I find that? And I had a friend who's pretty sure he met you at a Nine Inch Nails concert sometime in the 90s. So he's going to follow you. I don't know if he'll reach out and ask you that or not, but he's like, yeah, I met a guy named Dana in Phoenix at a Nine Inch Nails concert and blah, blah. And I'm like, well, it has to be the same one. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, he's like, yeah, this guy said he went to like 100 shows a year. I'm like, it has to be the same, Danon. He's like, well, why would I? I was like, well, how, hey, how many Danons do you know? And then how many Danons go to 100 plus live music shows a year? I'm like, it has to be. There's no doubt about it. So we shall see what you say about that. Quinch Press says, I went to San Diego last week to see Jimmy Eat World. I also made it to False Idol. Oh, man. How is False Idol? It looks so good in the photos and stuff. Chow, thanks for asking about the Smithsonian. Um, I'm so excited. It's, you know, I mean, you guys have known that I've worked on it, but the public at large doesn't know anything. And so me and the, the writers and everyone else involved, you know, this uh, two more days and they'll finally start having the press releases and stuff out and uh, people will finally start to get to glimpse at some of the stuff we've been working on. So it's been kind of nonstop. So I'm really excited for everybody to uh, to see it 
and I do hope they do some merch so that people get a chance to kind of take home some of the artwork with them. It'd be cool to see what happens. Chow Time says, we saw Jonas Brothers last week. Oh, well, that's really cool. Um, Quinch, my friend's name's Kevin. And the irony is, I think I probably introduced him to you at like a Phoenix Comic Con. But, you know, he's just now putting it together. Because I was showing him your Instagram and stuff. Uh, how, was, how was Jonas Brothers Chow Time? Like, I don't really, I mean, I know, was it Nick Jonas from the movies? But I don't really know the Jonas Brothers music that well. So, like, how was the show? What's the scene like there? Uh, Quinch Press says, I love False Idol. I've been there five or six times before. Well, I wish, I mean, and the funny thing is, is we stayed in Little Italy one time for Comic-Con. And I've been to some other, like, speakeasies and craft craft cocktail bars in uh, San Diego, but it's been so long ago, I probably didn't even know False Idol was, oh, clearly, I didn't know False Idol was there. Or I would have gone. Uh, Chow Time says, the concert was amazing. There was a drunk girl that ate, ate pavement. We have to emphasize the ate. She ate pavement. So... She had had a couple too many, it sounds like. Took a header. Did she get up and shake it off? She's like, bounce up. She's like, I feel no pain. I think it's starting to look like a gargoyle now. Still got some shading and stuff to do. Yes, then she passed out and fell off her lawn chair. Oh my goodness. I, uh, sounds like my college days. Just substitute Jonas Brothers with like Veruca Salt and uh, the Breeders and the Pixies and then that would have been me. <laughs> there you go. He's starting to look Kind of creepy and cool, right? Ooh, gargoyle. See, on the Star Wars Celebration stuff, I got an email from them, I guess yesterday. Just basically the, like the, you know, don't forget, you've been selected to submit your artwork and here's your deadline and stuff. And I mean, it's really nice to get those emails, but at the same time, I'm like, like I'm not stressed enough about it already, you know, like, like, ah. So yeah, I've got one concept like completely done. Got it mocked up in color even. And then I've got my like sketchbook pieces for two more. Now I can only turn in two total concepts, but I'm gonna try to get three done before the deadline so that I've got some wiggle room, I can pick which one I really want to, which ones I really want to submit. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, Quinch Press says, speaking of other bars in San Diego, I also made it to Kindred, Prohibition, Neighborhood, Noble Experiment, Polite Provisions, and Realm of the 52 Remedies. Holy smokes, Quinch. Um, you did really good. Now, which one of those is in the gas lamp and you walk through the beer kegs? You push the beer kegs. I mean, who knows that place is even still there, but if you happen to know, because that's the one I've been to several times, just because it's in the gas lamp or we're always there for San Diego Comic Con. 
<laughs> Chow's like, you're going to celebration? Well, we don't know that yet, Chow. We don't know that yet. So this is just phase one, right? So the way this works is they invite you to submit artwork and then and then decide if, if they want to use, you know, use the artwork or not. So we're still in the submission phase, but you know, I've been to, I've been very fortunate. I've been to every celebration since 2015. So it would not surprise me in the slightest if I was not invited to the next celebration. Um, just, just by math, right? Just by simple math. Um, but if I was, that would be delightful, and I would be very honored to go back again. So we shall see. But I did definitely I don't take it for granted and don't count on it. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But but I know that if I go to celebration, then um, Whitney. And Catherine will be disappointed because it's the same weekend as Phoenix Con and they were talking about coming down here. So either way I win, right? Either way I get to hang out with people I like and share my artwork with people. So there's it's all it's all good. But I've been trying to talk to, to Joe. Joe Crony and I we normally share booth space and see what he wants to do this time. So we'll see how it works out. You know, um, his uh, girlfriend, Ashley, she's also a Star Wars artist now and she's doing a lot of the sketch cards and stuff. And so we'll see, maybe they'll share a booth this time and I'll do something different. But that's if, if I go at all, we don't even know that yet. So I'm not going to count my chickens or my porgs or, or my loath cats before they hatch. We'll just see what happens. All right. I think we've got that starter roughed in. Oh gosh, yeah, I can see it in the video. That's looking pretty cute. I'm a gargoyle, grr. Uh, Quench Press says, Noble Experiment is the one where you push through the Beer kegs, yeah, I thought that was the one. It's a nice spot. It's small. It feels special. At least when I was there, the drinks were fantastic. And they really took their time. I, I think it was like, gosh, I don't know. It could have been like 20 minutes to make like one, one round of like cocktails for four people. Like they were not rushed at all. They were like, we're just gonna do what we do. Um, Quinch Press says, I was at Noble Experiment on Friday. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yeah, I like that place. I like that place a lot. Chow says, we're going to celebration. Oh, great. That's great news, Chow time. Um, you don't have to say on here if you want, but like, have you guys picked out uh, which hotel there in Anaheim? That you're gonna stay at? Are you gonna stay at one of the two that are attached to the convention center, or like, are you gonna stay at one of the Disney ones? Or cheers to you guys too! Cheers to Star Wars Celebration! Cheers to Speakeasy Bars! And craft cocktails. Randy Cake says. That looks amazing. Oh, thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. Chow's the double tree. Ooh, I like that one, Chow. I actually think I've never got to stay there. I've had lots of like business dinners and stuff there during during events, but I don't think I've ever got to stay there. It's a good spot. I have a feeling it's probably less insane. What's the other one? Hyatt or a, or a, a or a uh, Marriott, a Hilton, Hyatt. I don't know. Wherever the other one is, it seems like we have, we have, end up there at like the lobby bar a lot. Uh, Quinch says not best not to mention Joe's name around me. Oh well, it sounds like there's some drama there. Well, I got to hear about that now, Quinch. What is it? Oh, you a sketch or something? 
or worse. See, I'll just sit here quietly and let you answer. I am, I am a gargoyle. Drink my cocktails. He's holding these like little torches, with, like little candle toppers on them, so I could put a little flame on there. Oh, uh, quench press went silent. He doesn't want to talk about crony. Well, since I was just in Kansas City, I'll tell my favorite crony story. And that's that there's this place there called Joe's Barbecue. And um, it's a kind of, it's a typical Kansas City barbecue place. You go in, you wait in line, you put in your order, you pick up your order, you eat. And so Joe orders this awesome, this place is known for two things. They're known for they're big giant platters, right? You pick how many meats you want, you pick how many side dishes you want, you get your cornbread or your biscuit or whatever, you move on. Or they're big giant like sandwiches or barbecue sandwiches. And their most famous one is called the Z-Man. I think the Z-Man is brisket with onion rings and some other stuff on it. And so, um, so Joe goes through the line, he orders his platter he gets his two meats, he gets his, I don't know, two or three sides, cornbread or biscuit, whatever. And he says, and I will have a side of Z-Man. And they're like, what? He's like, you know, Z-Man, your barbecue sandwich with the onion ring stuff. They're like, yeah. He goes, yeah, that's my favorite sandwich. He's like, I want one of those on the side. They're like, that's a separate order or this is all together? He's like, no, no, I want the platter with all the stuff I told you and a side of Z-Man. And they were just like dumbfounded. And so that's like our joke always for now when we're in Kansas City is like, I want a side of Z-Man. Because Joe is, he can roll that hard. Like I would die, man, but he's got it. He, he's got it under control. All right, Quinchpress says, um, I ordered my Batgirl a year ago yesterday. I'm pretty patient, but a year is extreme. You are right, a year is extreme. I am guilty of being fast on some sketches and slow on others, and uh, I'm sorry to hear that Joe was slow on that one for you. Send him a reminder, I'm sure you have. Uh, and sometimes the squeaky wheel gets the oil, man, so, you know. Keep bugging him. I had something funny happen where um, I uh, someone had ordered some G.I. Joe stuff for me and I had shipped it out and I guess I don't know they said they they had tried to contact me via multiple channels and I don't I don't know what channels those were um, but I had received a Facebook message from them I don't know if it's to my Octopolis Facebook or to my personal and Facebook's made it really hard to see both now so that's annoying um, but it was basically like, you know, I have not received my GI Joe order. And if I don't hear from you by this date, I'm going to like, you know, talk to either PayPal, the credit card company, whatever. And someone else screwed me over. They said for like $400 worth of merchandise, blah, 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 blah. And because of that, they're going to like, you know, take all the measures against me and all this stuff. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm pretty sure I already responded to this person. So I was like, oh yeah, here's the email I sent you on this date after you told me that you hadn't received your artwork. And it basically just came down to the, you know, the post office. I don't know if they lost it or just hadn't delivered it, but it was no big deal. And I had responded, but it's sad, you know, this, this whole thing with the pandemic, the mail's just been so screwed up, man. Like, you know, I'll send out 10 packages that all arrive in perfect condition and perfect time. And then I'll have that one. It just takes one, right? I'll have that one that doesn't arrive on time or doesn't arrive on all or is just freaking destroyed. And you're just like, what happens? Christy got two, two packages, UPS, that the boxes were just like 
ripped open and stuff is leaking out of them and you're just like what what's going on see that was pretty crazy so he ended up being really super nice but you know I think everybody's on the defensive right now so maybe that's what you should do quench is go on the defensive and maybe how you get your action uh Quinch says, there's a delay on the chat. You're saying I've gone silent and I've already responded. Uh, Quinch says, I sent a message on 921 but have not got a response. Quinch is like, let's talk about something else. Well, I already talked about Amaro's before you got here. But um, yes, let's definitely talk about something else. Well, it sounds like you had fun in San Diego. Let's uh, which, which of all those bars that you visit? Like, I mean, it's hard to pick a favorite, but like, Maybe instead of saying a favorite, do you have like a uh, a fun experience at one of them or a story to share from one of those? Or maybe a, you discovered a new cocktail you, you'd never had before or a bartender you'd never met before. That seems like a happier thought process, right? And uh, no one's complained, so I'm assuming the music volume is okay, but if it's too quiet or too loud or anything, let me know. I'm still, now that I've got the sound working again, I don't know how you guys hear it, so trying to get it adjusted and everything. Of course, they came out with a new Mac OS yesterday that I've not upgraded to, mostly because of Photoshop, but also because I'm afraid the moment I upgrade, it's gonna break the sound settings again. We can't have that, we just got it fixed. There must be a delay on the chat. Because I said something about asking Quinch about his bars he went to and I haven't seen anything pop up yet. The internet's broken, you guys. All right, so. Yeah, you know, I, I was thinking how I, I've always had a, um, always had, I've had this Octopolis store for years and years and years. I switched over from Store Envy to Shopify in 2019. I've really been enjoying it. And then just on a whim with all this Tiki stuff, I opened a Etsy. I've actually been having a lot of new, a lot of new, um, fans like discovering my artwork through Etsy, which is really nice. Um, but I don't know if any of those people are like finding it over here because they're not inside the sort of like Octopolis family, you know, they're just, they're just like from Etsy. So that's been a little bit of a challenge because it's like, well, I have all these new, you know, art lovers who are discovering everything, but they're, um, it can be a little tricky to get them to, to discover Tiki Tuesday and all the fun that we're having over here. So no, I need to craft a special message just for those people or something, I guess. Uh, Quinch Press says, I enjoyed Realm of the 52 Remedies. I had read an article about them before they opened, but it kept not working. Oh, not working out. Uh, the space was amazing. The drinks were solid. I had heard mixed reviews, but I thought it was pretty good. But maybe it was my bartender, Chris, that made the difference. Well, that's good to hear. Well, you know, you're really personal, Quinch. And you're going to make those connections with the bartenders where other people might not. You know what? That's a, that's a topic. Let's talk about this, people. Let's get fired up. People who don't acknowledge their wait staff, whether it be a bartender, a server, whatever it is. I was around somebody who I didn't know that well. And we, this is on this Kansas City trip, and I, we had to, had to have a couple meals. And um, no, please, no, thank you, no, I would like. It was just like, I'm gonna have this, ignore. And then you know, 
it just seemed, I don't know, I don't know, it's not, it's not how I operate, we'll put it that way. And I think it's the same thing with bartenders, right? Some people are like, this is my drink, this is what you're going to make me, and then they're like, that's it. I'm like, no, man, have a relationship with your, with your bartender, have a, have a conversation, you know, like, figure out, let them know what you like, of course, you've got to open up that discourse, but like, you know, find out what they're passionate about, and maybe they can turn you on to something new, whether it's a sommelier with some wine, or a bartender making you a drink, I mean, you know, like, don't act like they're invisible, like, they're people too, you know, and you're gonna have a much better experience if you're dealing with them like a human being and not just acting like a jerk. And that's how I feel about that. I think it's really rude to be like dismissive of like service staff and stuff. Especially those type of people. Who, sometimes the people who are dismissive are also the ones that are like the most critical. They're like, well, they didn't do the thing I liked. Hey, Dr. Taco, good to see you. Um, Randy Cake says, we always try to make friends with the bartender and get their recommendations. Of course, right? I mean, like, that's part of the fun of a place is, of course, if you have a drink you like, you want to see how they're going to make it. Of course. But if you're somewhere that's different or special, you want to know, you're like, hey, what should I try here? What's, what's your favorite thing? What are you good at? Like, what do you recommend? What do you like? What are you into? I mean, like, it's just like, it doesn't hurt. Like, it, it doesn't doesn't cost any more to be nice to people, you know? <laughs> Dr. Ta Taco MD is joking. He's like, bartenders are the worst. I never treat them like human beings. That's hilarious. Hilarious. For those of you who don't know, Dr. Taco is a bartender. So Dr. Taco, instead of a tiki drink, I made a, I would call it a semi-craft cocktail. You probably would not. You would just call it junk, but... um. Kentucky Connection, which is a Maro, uh, Grand Marnier or Contro, and your favorite bourbon. So pretty nice, simple, easy cocktail that people can make at home with just a few ingredients and not a, not a lot of skill. So nice, reliable beverage. For those of you who like bourbon or whiskeys of some sort, But I like it for a change once in a while, you know? So if you're into that, give it a shot. And it's fun, you can try a couple of uh, a couple of different Amaros, see which one speaks to you. Dr. Chaco says, that's a cocktail. I'm not a snob, just a rum nerd. I like it, rum nerd, that's a good, that's a good phraseology, rum nerd. Rum nerd, you should you should create an app called Rum Nerd. It's like a recommendations and stuff. Like Rum Nerd gave this four stars. You're like, oh yeah, man, that rum, it's a five star rum on Rum Nerd. Kind of like um. Oh, you know, all those beer check-in apps and stuff, like untapped and stuff. But for rum. He likes rum. Rum finger. Uh, Quinch says, human beings is kind of a stretch. Most of them are degenerates. Also, some of my best friends and secondary family. Still slightly subhuman, though. <laughs> uh, Randy Cake says, I'm here for all the rum drinks. Heck yeah. You know, that's a good point. I, I'm, I'm due to experiment and pick up some new, some new rums and stuff. All right, just doing a little shading here now. Giving a little bit of a wash, gray wash to kind of just work out some of the details.
It's starting to look very gargoyly. Imagine having your favorite tropical tiki and rum cocktail out of this guy. Chow time, redeemed hydrate. Cheers to you. Gosh, two in a row. Jeez. Uh, Dr. Chaco says, quench press isn't wrong. We all have, or we have troll tendencies. Okay. Cheers to you, Chow. Welcome to the second one after I throw a few more brush strokes down, Chow time. Oh man, it's good as the ice melts, it like really activates the Amaro. You really get that flavor. It's not too sweet, which is good too. I don't know how you guys feel about old fashions, but I really get annoyed when they're too sweet. I kind of feel like the sign of a good one is when it's not too sweet. Uh, I guess unless you live in like Wisconsin or something where they make them out of brandy instead of Bourbon, have you ever had those? It's a different thing. I've been to some supper clubs in Wisconsin on some visits and stuff and get the, the brandy based old fashions there. It's kind of a different thing, you know? Well, I don't know how this guy's looking on your end, but I kind of feel like he's uh, kind of coming together here. He's got this nice little like sprightly gargoyle look to him. Chow says, I get annoyed when it's cloudy and has more than one ice. <laughs> yeah, those are good points. Those are very good points. Especially if that cloudiness is coming from like multiple sugar cubes or Part of it though is like, as, as we need to be good connoisseurs, right? You need to be able to walk into a bar, whether it's a hotel lobby bar or a regular bar and ascertain what type of bar you're at, right? So if you go into a place that's clearly a wine bar or clearly a beer bar and order an old fashioned, you don't like it, that's kind of on you, right? But if they advertise themselves as like a, a cocktail bar or a craft cocktail bar, then, you know, that should be like the minimum standard of what they should be able to do. Uh, Quinch Press says, going out drinking with my industry friends can be interesting, fun, but interesting. Interesting because they are picky or are not picky or are critiquing others. Sounds like there's a story there. And Quench, man, you and I got to get together sometime soon. It's been way too long. And before I have to go to Washington, D.C., because otherwise it's going to be like freaking New Year's or after New Year's. Um, Chow Time says mid century old fashioned used to mash the fruit. Uh oh, huh? I don't know about that. Oh, he puts a little barf face on there. <laughs> Chow says, that old fashioned that came to me in a martini glass, I sent it back. <laughs> That's hilarious. Quinch says they can get a little wild. Oh, okay. So it's more about the uh, loud part of time. You know, that's, that's the entire food service industry, right? I mean, that's kind of the, the cliche or the joke or whatever. Like, you know, they all get off work at 1 a.m. or whatever, and then party until the sunrise comes up. It's the joke, at least. It's the thing you hear a lot, whether it's true or not. Man, I wish you guys could smell this. 
Man, the aroma from the Amaro is just like intoxicating. It's so good. Mm-mm-mm. I'll tell you guys what, this is my third stream of the day and uh, I've been working like crazy and I haven't slept a lot. So I might be calling it a night, but I've got time to hang out with you guys for a few minutes. Um, Quench, do you want to find us a raid for tonight? That might be fun. And uh, hopefully you guys like the music I was playing tonight. So what I've been doing is I've just been playing like real Tiki music and we are not archiving these streams to Twitch. We're just archiving them to YouTube. Um, where they just say, hey, you can't monetize it. So, so far that seems to way, be the way to do it with the music. Um, we also, the sound alerts are working again. Uh, the sticker party is working again. So I think right as of right now, everything's working on our Twitch stream. Uh, I wanna say thank you to everybody who purchased the new Tiki mug from Tiki Tango Atlanta. If you haven't got yours, uh, go get it now before they're out. And um, thank you to everybody who bought the new DeLorean artwork and the new Ghostbusters artwork. I really appreciate your support. Those were both passion projects and I've got so much good feedback from it. So um, thanks for your support and you know, tell a friend, please tell a friend. And an extra special thank you to everybody who's been buying Tiki artwork and Tiki sketches and stuff. Really, really appreciate that. So with that said, uh, I know we don't have any credits to run tonight. So what we're going to find is we're gonna like, Quinch get a raid, he's got three he says, so we're gonna pick one of those. And we're gonna get, so remember, you get 250 channel points for every time you do make a raid. You don't have to stay there all night, stay there for a few minutes. Um, and so you're gonna use our Octopolis emotes and your cheers and just have a good time. So we're just wait for Quinch here to tell us who it is we're going to raid any moment now. And then we'll be ready to go, it's so exciting. Um, but I'm glad I got to come back this week because um, it, was, it really it was really sad to miss last week. It's been really stressful. So I needed this. It was good to see you guys and hang out because it's been so so crazy and busy. Um, Dr. Doc Dr. says, hey, chill time. Uh, the Wisconsin Old Fashioned was the was muddled fruit with brandy. It came into vogue in the 1800s. There you go. Yep, I've definitely had that. Oh, Quinch says, I got three Tiki Tango mugs. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Uh, Quinch, do we want to try Jubilina again? She's coming up with like a pretty big audience tonight. So we could do that if it sounds good to you. Uh, before we just wear out our welcome here. Looks like, oh, of course I get an advertisement when I try to preview her stream. It's not supposed to show other streamers adverts, but you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm glad you got three of the Tiki Tango mugs, but why three? Three seems like a weird number. Uh, she's doing some like, well, you know what? I'm not gonna have any influence over your um, raid because I have poor raid foo. So I'm gonna let you come up with the raid. <laughs> but yes, I'm gonna give you guys a closer look our gar gargoyle, check that out. Ooh, he's so creepy, look at that smile. Ooh, gargoyle. Oh, okay, uh, Quinch says that works. So we're gonna do that, so that's gonna happen in about 10 seconds. So guys, you guys know how much I appreciate your support, how much fun I have hanging out with you guys and talking Star Wars and Tiki and liquor and everything else and just sharing my artwork with you. So thanks again. Um, let's see if we can get this rate going. Are we gonna get our countdown? No, we're doing it. 